Okay, so you're asking about um, how to put your name on a on a dot pepo on an object file uh, program. You remember the last um, the the last sentinel, the last uh, data that you put in this string of uh, bytes is the lowercase zz. So what happens is the loader stops. You know, when it, when it detects that ZZ, it stops loading. And so anything you put after the ZZ on the next line or whatever, in whatever format you want, you can put anything there you want. Like you can put your name and the date and the assignment number if you want to do that. And the spaces don't matter then? Not, not after the ZZ, not after the dot .ZZ, because after the ZZ, it, it, does, it, it just stops there. So whatever you put, it just ignores. Right, okay. So you, whatever format you want. So that's, what, that's, what, that's one way to, that's how to put your name on it. On, a, on an object file, okay? Try to hand it back some homeworks. Any questions about the homework for today? Um, for subtraction, how do you... Pay? Yeah, I don't want you to do the subtract instruction. I want you to add the negative 3, so you need to store... Oh, wait. Uh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Well, that, I'm, I was thinking of something that's due next time. What was the due today? To due today... Um, it's what a bunch of facts about Pepe, like how much is in memory, how much is in the... Oh, right, right. I was thinking ahead, sorry. Right. It, it was, yeah, a bunch of facts, how many bits in memory, that kind of thing. And then loading, and there's one Oh, there's, there's one where, like, yeah, like, it, if it, you give us a load command and, and like, the accumulator. And yeah, yeah, and... Mm -hmm. You have to say what it does. You have to say what the final values are in each one of those locations. The best way to do that is, I would prefer you do that in a table, you know. But anyway. Question. Um, when you're adding... Um, it says you're adding the word from register R, or from memory to the, the word from register R. Do you add, um, do you carry it all the way from all, all 16 bits? Yes. Do you start from the least important? Yeah, least significant. Least significant and go to the most important. Yes. And does that work the same with subtraction? Did I, I don't think, did I give you a subtraction? Give us a subtraction. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did? And I don't know how to do it. Well, you know what? Just do it in decimal I and then f just, decimal. yeah, just, just convert to decimal and subtract. I mean, okay, actually, you want to know, here's, here's the other way to do it. The way subtraction works is it negates and adds. Oh. So if you want to do it in binary, you can do it that way. You can negate and you never have to go to decimal then. You can just do it in binary. Okay, so you, you take the two's complement? Yeah. And then of, of, um, of whatever you're subtracting. And then you add it in binary. Yeah, don't don't mess with trying to subtract in binary because that's not even how the hardware does it. Okay. The hardware actually even even it in it. E it negates it and adds. Yeah. Okay. So you could either do it that way, or in binary, or you could like convert both of those numbers to decimal, figure out what the negative one is, and and, and the subtract and figure out what the answer is, and then and then uh, convert it back to binary, and then hex. It's actually more straightforward if you just do it all in binary, but you never know what the values are in decimal. But hey, either way is fine, just so long as you can do it. I checked it in decimal. Oh, so you did it both ways. Yeah, check your answers. Yeah. That's like, plug it in when you get the answer, plug it in and see if it's correct. It felt really good. Yeah, it does, I doesn't it? Like a thousand. Yeah, and yeah, 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 that's a good point. Yeah, that's a <laughs> good point. Okay, any more questions about the uh, homework for today? It's for number six, where we're executing these instructions. Yes. Do we take it from the initial state, do the first instruction, which changes its state, and then the next instruction builds off the change state? No, it, it does back. not build off from the change state. Okay. That would be a horrendous thing to have to grade. <laughs> you always go back to the initial state of the first one okay. for each one of those things. I'm glad you asked okay. that. That's a common question. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? When you're when you're like loading and storing the bytes on one of them, we have to load a byte from the index register. I mean, to the index register from memory. Yes. And so the right two bytes change in the index register. No, the right byte changes. The right two hex characters change. Okay. Yeah. But you take it from the left side of the memory. No, there is no left or right side of memory because memory is byte addressable. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a byte instruction, it's that byte in memory. Okay. 
Oh. There's nothing next to it. So it takes. Are you with me? See, memory is not word addressable. Memory is not word addressable. It's byte addressable. So when you have the address of a byte, it's that byte. Okay. So that's a common mistake. That's it's that byte. It's that byte. At, there's no left or right in memory at all. Memory is nothing but a sequence of contiguous bytes. If it said zero a four zero, it would be the second byte after zero a four three f. Right. I'm not. I don't understand what you said. If, if it but, sends you to zero a three f, which is the. By the way, it, path, it depends on what is sent. If it's a load, as opposed to a load byte, right. then it takes the byte at that address plus the one at the address one more. But if it's a load byte, it just takes that one byte. It doesn't take the right one. It doesn't take the one next to it. That's that's a very crucial detail. Or is four bits. So two hex characters is one byte. Yes, two hex characters is one byte. One hex character is four bits, eight bits in a byte, so there's two hex characters per byte. If we store byte from the accumulator or something, and the accumulator has two bytes, it just takes the first byte there as well? No, 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 no. It takes the least significant. Yeah, it takes the least significant. And it puts it at that Byte, byte let in memory because memory is byte addressable. Oh, I'm glad we went over that because that's always confusing. Okay, good deal. All right, we have a lot to do today. We're going to have a couple of demos, a couple of three. We're going to have a lot of demos. Now, um, so let's re let's remember. Have you memorized yet the von Neumann cycle? Five steps of the von Neumann cycle. The first one is fetch. Decode. Decode, increment, increment, execute, execute, repeat. Do you see you know, the rest of you guys memorize this? Right? She's at Fetch, decode. Well, I know she's cheating. <laughs> Cheat. <laughs> Cheaters never win. She's being Cheat. Yeah. Yeah. Question. Isn't the opcode, the entire first byte. In the instruction? No, 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 no. The opcode are, are those that little group, the first little group of bits. Oh, because it can be four or six. Yeah. Remember, we said that that was the expanding opcode oh, okay. field. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Okay. So here, yeah. So you were right. Here it is. Here's, here's the von Neumann execution cycle fetch. And what do we fetch? We're fetching the instruction from memory. And then decode and then increment the. And what do we increment? Which register do we increment? Uh, the program counter. The program counter. Now, why do, we, why do we increment the program counter? Because what does the program counter contain? Instructions. No, the program counter does not contain an instruction. We actually, here, let, which register in the CPU does contain the instruction? The instruction register. The instruction register contains the instruction itself. What does the program counter contain? The, next the what of the next instruction? The, the address. The program counter contains the address of the instruction to be executed next. So when we, when we do fetch in the von Neumann cycle, what are we fetching? No, we're not fetching an address. We're fetching a what? Um, the, ad the stuff in that. The instruction. The, an instruction. We are fetching an instruction, the next instruction to be executed. And how do we know which instruction to fetch? No. How do we know which instruction? How does the hardware know which instruction? Where to go to fetch the instruction? What is it? How does it know? Yes, it looks at the it uses the address in the program counter and that tells it the address of where to go in the memory to fetch the instruction. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, why do we increment what do we increment? PC. The program counter, the PC. And why do we increment it? Well, cuz it has to go to the next instruction after this one's done. Yeah, so so we increment it so that the next time we do a fetch, mm -hmm. the address will be the one after the one that we just fetched. Is everybody clear on that? Mm -hmm. Now, but we have a little bit of an issue here. Because how many bytes does it take to store an instruction? 8 to 24. Eight. Bytes. So 1 to 3. Yeah, 8 to 24 is the number of bits. How many bytes? 1 to 3. Yeah, a unary instruction could be 1. A non-unary instruction would take 3. So tell me, how, so how much should we increment the program counter by when we do the increment part? 
one to three bytes. Yeah, either we should increment it by one or we should increment it by three. Is everybody clear on that? Is everybody following me the logic here? Mm -hmm. Okay, but now here's my question. How are we going to know, how is the hardware going to know whether to in increment it by one or to increment it by three? After it decodes the instruction, it will know. Yeah, which part of the instruction? Um, After it decodes what? The, the, first, four. the first four. The f eight. The first eight bits, the first byte. First byte. What is that called? The Lock. what? The no, that's not the... Uh, you're close, you're so close. That's the instruction specifier, and that's one byte. So how do you suppose the hardware actually increments the program counter? It reads the first byte? Yeah, what it does is, is it, it gets the first byte, and it increments the program counter by one, but then what does it do? Uh, how does it know whether to read, how does it know whether to fetch? Then what does it do? It executes the instruction. Not, well, no, because, because it, it, it just got the first byte. It, ha, ha, then what would what it have to do? Because it doesn't have to see if it's non-unary. Yeah, and ha, yes, that's what it has to do. It has to see whether it's a unary or non-unary, because if it's a non-unary, it's got to get the next two bytes. Right. So how does it know that? How does it get that information? Where does it get that information from? What did it just fetch? What did, we, what did you say it just fetched? The instruction, the instruction specifier. So what does it do then? It checks the instruction. It checks the opcode. You're just asking what is the opcode. Mm -hmm. It checks that opcode and wired into that, into the instruction set is in that opcode. It, it can tell by looking at those bits whether the instruction is non-unary non non or unary. And if it's unary, It'll, it, it, well, it, it, it yeah, it already incremented it by one. Uh, if it's non-unary, it. no, no. If it's if it's sorry, wait. If it's sorry. sorry. If it yeah, which one is has the long one? Non it's non-unary. If it's non-unary, then it goes more. It, then and it goes against it and increments it more. So here is here is um, figure four point thirty is a is a little pseudocode description of the of the. Um, von Neumann cycle and figure 4.31 is a more detail. This is in this is more detail. This is the way it act, the hardware actually has to do it. So look at what it does in figure 4.31. Load the machine language program into memory starting at address 0000. Then it initializes the program counter to zeros. It initializes the stack pointer to but we'll talk about why that is the way it is later to some value. And then here's the loop. The loop is the von Neumann cycle. So it's due and what does it say here? Fetch the instruction specifier at the address contained in the program counter. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then what it does is it does PC gets PC plus one. So that's incrementing the program counter by one because it just fetched one byte. Are you with me? And then what does it do? It decodes the instruction specifier. And after, it's only after it decodes that instruction specifier that it can figure out if it has to do two more. So then what it does is if the instruction is not unary, then it, it fetches the operand specifier at the address specified in program counter because now the program counter is pointing to the address of the, of the instruction specifier, you know, one byte after. Are you with me? But then it does PC gets PC plus two. So in the end, PC will either be incremented by one or by three. Yeah. Um, can you have... Like button, I'd say binary, but two two bytes in just in there that won't execute. For example, like um, what would be put into the accelerator or no, no, accumulator, accumulator, <laughs> or the um, there are a, there okay there are a few bit combinations that are illegal. Very few. There's only like a handful of them, and that's why this loop says while the stop instruction do, does not execute and the instruction is legal. So there's, there's, a few, there's a few addressing modes that are illegal to use with a particular instruction. Mm -hmm. And in that case, it'll hiccup, you know. In, in, in the simulator, it'll just stop. Will, will, uh, but it's not very common. For example, if we put our names, like the, when we put out our name mm -hmm. and the characters, if we put the characters within the program. Ooh, that's nasty. The, here's what it will do. That frequently happens. If you forget to put the stop instruction, mm -hmm. what it'll do is it will just go on and it will fetch the next one 
and it will interpret it as if it's an instruction. Right. That's what it will do. Okay. And it will look up the opcode and it will think it's this, and, and because that's all it is. It has no innate intelligence. It cannot tell whether it's fetching data or instructions. Okay, so the data should be after the... The stop. stop. So you do all your instructions after this. and then you stop, and then data. Yes. Because, in fact, that is such a crucial question, which I was going to talk about today, that we're going to... No, I'm, we're, going, we're going to make a point. What, what you're saying is crucial to this uh, design idea. The von Neumann design. Von Neumann design principle. The von Neumann design principle is the following. Instructions and data share the same memory. Instructions and data share the same memory. In other words, you know, here, so what are the four parts of the computer? Input, input, input CPU, CPU, memory, memory output. output. That memory is that, that, that memory. That stores not only the, your instruction, I mean, it stores not only data, it also stores the instructions as well. And furthermore, when that memory and von Neumann, that was one of his crucial contributions that he, that he made in his initial design. It's amazing, you guys. This guy did this in the late 40s. The very first, you know, very first computers that were ever, electronic computers that were ever invented, he had this, he had this concept. And, and do you see why this, why this von Neumann cycle is based on this? It's the fact that instructions are in memory. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you this, every single, well, I shouldn't say every single. You should never say never. Never say always. 99.99% of all electronic computers ever invented have all been based on this same principle with that same von Neumann cycle at the root of it. In fact, how fast, how, how fast is your computer? When you, go, when you go to buy a computer, what's one of the things you look for for how fast it is? Hertz. Yeah, mega, megahertz or, yeah? Do you know how many megahertz yours is? Or gigahertz? What, 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 uh, probably 2.8. 2.8 what? Can you look it up? Yeah, I'll we'll look it up. Is it? Uh, two point one gigahertz. Okay, so your computer here, your computer is two point one gigahertz. Okay, does anyone know what we know what gig giga is? What's that? Uh, billion. Ten to the what? Yeah, billion. Is that right? I think so. I can yeah. look at my physics book. Ten to the five. We were supposed to have this memorized. <laughs> it's billion. It's so it's two point one times ten to the what? Times ten to the nine. So this is two one billion hertz. Now, does everyone is it? Does anyone know what a hertz is? That's a frequency. Yes. And what's another way to say frequency? One or zero. One over a period. Oh yes. Very good. Good. So this is cycles per second. So this is two point one times ten to the nine cycles per second. What do you think this cycle is? Is that hardware? This is that von Neumann cycle. That's what that is. That's the cycle. Yeah. So what we're saying is, if your computer right there, sitting in your lap, is cranking out 2.1 billion of those every second, are you with me on this? That's the speed we're talking about. 2 billion, 50 code in kernel execute rate, 50 code in kernel execute rate. Two billion of those every second. Yeah? So that's how this is related to what you know and love in your laptop, you know, in your, in your laptops. Right? Your cell phone, same thing. There's a von Neumann cycle, there's a computer in there, a von Neumann cycle, 250 equal has a little memory in it. That's true for Macs or PCs. 
It's true. What I'm saying is this is true. There was a point in time about, you know, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, when they wanted, uh, there was a lot of research to try to break the von Neumann cycle. There were a huge research effort went into trying to improve on this. And in the end, commercially, they were never able to do it. There were some machines, I, I, you know, there were a lot of research papers were written, they say, we're gonna this is a non-von Neumann machine, and they had these data flow machines, and they, with the, the clock, and, da, da, and all this, they were gonna do away with the clock, and things would come when they, uh, it, nothing ever panned out. Nothing panned out, after all these years. And then, you know, people say, well, what, doesn't it change all the time? You know, they, they, you know, you know, you 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 say, gee, how do you? How you must have to really keep up with computer science because things are changing all the time. This has not changed in 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it's amazing when you think about it. It's a, It's truly, truly amazing. It's it's a. It's like, how many ways are there to compute? Maybe we're you know this. It's. There's something fundamental going on here with this von Neumann design. Okay, and then last time we saw um, how to, out, how to uh, these programs, these uh, instructions were in, the, in this program in figure 4.32 to output the letters HI. And here is, I don't know if you've read this in the book, but in figure 4.33, I have in excruciating detail how that program executes to output those two letters. Did you see that? See, look here, on A, here's the initial state before, before the program is loaded. And then in part B, the program is loaded into main memory. I think we demoed that. You could see when we did the load option. Remember how it went into memory. And then in part uh, C, a uh, program counter is incremented, er, is initialized to 0000. zero, zero, zero. So I, the only registers I'm showing there in the CPU are the program counter and the instruction register, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's fetch, decode, increment, execute, repeat. So fetch brings the 510007 into the instruction register. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then decode, uh, not showing that. Increment the program counter, that gets incremented to 0003 because three bytes were loaded, right? And then execute, and so the letter H is sent to the output, and then fetch the next one, increment the program counter. Uh, D, uh, I is sent, and then fetch the stop, increment the program, execute, and the computer halts, right? But still, each one of those cycles, two billion per second. Is everybody is everybody with me on that? What is what is it that um, is two point one gigahertz? Is that the CPU? Is that the yes. Point? Yeah. Yeah. That's how fast the CPU is running. Because it's the CPU and that does all this. Yes. All of this is wired into the CPU. The von Neumann cycle is wired into the CPU. Yeah. And what determines how fast it can do it? Well, have you heard of overclocking? Yes. You know, there's a clock. One of the one of the chips on your circuit in the on the circuit board is a clock, is a master clock, mm -hmm. and it puts out, you know, in a in a 2.1 gigahertz thing, it, it puts out a, a sequence of um, of pulses that look like this. It's they they look like this. Okay, mm -hmm. and that one that one clock drives all the the circuitry in all of the CPU. And so and and so from here to here is one is there's a billion of the you know this is the period so one over this period is the frequency. Okay? And and it and so and that one clock so that master clock on the circuit board is controlling the whole thing. And what they do when they overclock, you know, they build in a little margin of error in the chips and so some of these these hot dog computer hardware geeks. They say, oh, I can get more performance, and they'll go in there and they'll change the clock, or they'll no learn how to adjust it to make it go faster. But if you go too fast, then the chip doesn't work anymore. Because it can only handle so much speed, you yeah. know. So they'll go and they'll try to get close to the margin of error and get a little more performance out of it and overclock their things. But the whole thing is driven by just one master clock on the circuit board. Oh. Well. One clock chip. Okay? So here's, now, uh, I think uh, what we'll do now is let's, we're going to go through a few programs and, and see how they work. Now, um, this next program in figure 4.34 is a program to output, input two letters and output them in reverse order. Okay, now let's see if we can, I don't, I don't want to take the time to go through and look up all the opcodes and verify that these instructions do what they're, 
Okay, but let's take a look at this machine language program. The first instruction is the character input instruction. So if you take that 49, actually I said I wasn't going to do it, but let's do the 49. <laughs> yeah, 4 is 0, 0, 1, 0, and 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So if you look up here, if you look up, you will see that what? That this is the op code? Wait, it's that's not. It's yeah, it's zero. Oh. zero, zero. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> somebody did somebody tell me wrong? Uh, I wasn't yeah. thinking. What's uh, zero, okay? Zero, yeah. yeah, zero one zero zero, and then one one <laughs> zero zero one. Oh, nine? Isn't that what's up there? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Why is that? So it's going to register. Um, oh, oh, oh! No, no, yeah, no, no, no! It's not R. Okay, I think I think it's this. This is the op code, right? And this is the addressing mode. You want to look that up uh, inside front cover of the book? Yeah, it's one and then three letters for the address. Yeah. yeah all right. This is the op code for character. It doesn't have an R field. Right. Okay. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And then this is and and what does this in indicate? Direct. Direct addressing. So what that first instruction does is it, is it, it, input, it takes uh, something from the input device and sends it to what memory location? 000D. Um, zero, 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 000D. Zero, 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 where is 000D zero, zero, on that listing? It's actually not yeah. shown there, yeah. you know. It's, but, yeah, yeah, but it's, <laughs> it, but it's you know, there's 64,000 bytes altogether. You know, we don't show them all on the listing, but it's down there physically, right? Mm -hmm. Does everybody see that that's going to input the first letter in, at 000D? Then what's the next one going to do? Input, input the second letter to where? Zero, 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 e. e. So that's the one after it. Now, if you look up the opcode for that 5-1 instruction, what is that? That's the uh, character, character output. output. And what's it going to output it from what? Zero, zero. E, and then do what? Output. output from 000D and then, okay? So if the input is UP, the output's going to be PU. Does everybody see? And then the stop, you know, and then, yeah? Is everybody clear on that? Okay, I'll demo that in a second, okay? But now, the next, the next program that we're going to look at is a program that adds two numbers, okay? And these two numbers that we're going to add are going to be a decimal 5 and a decimal 3. So let's take a look at this program, which is figure 4.35 in the book. And so I've shown the, um, oh, I didn't need to write the binary on there. I had the binary on the slide right away. <laughs> okay, so now, um, so let's take a look at the machine language program. Uh, you see the first instruction is the C10011. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you suppose that instruction is? Can you, have you figured that one out yet? Does anybody have inside front? You know, which one is it? C one, C one. So that would be one one zero zero. Load byte, no, not load. 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 That's load. And so that's going to load from what location? From zero zero one. Well, let's go down to zero zero one one and see what's there. Decimal five. That's a decimal five. So does everybody see that? That's going to put the five in the accumulator. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next instruction? Add the two numbers. Add, but now what's it going to add? What's that? Zero, zero, one, three. one, three. So you go down to zero, zero, one, three, and what's there? Decimal That's a decimal three. Okay. But now, you guys, if we add the five and we add the three, what are we going to get in binary? What are we going to get in binary? The, the five would be what? Zero, 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 zero. Well, I don't want to write it all out. Zero, one, zero, one, zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we add the three, it'll be eight. So in the end, what will the, what will the, um, what's eight? What? One, zero, zero, zero. Yeah. yeah. One. one, zero, zero, zero. So this is what it will, this is what will be in the accumulator after the addition, right? Mm -hmm. But now look, you guys, what is the only output instruction that we have? What is the only output instruction that we have? Output a character. So if you were to go to the ASCII chart, yeah, if you were to go to the ASCII chart and, and, if, we, and, and if we were to output, output this, this would not be 8. 
the, the, the character eight, are you with me? Now why would, because, the, is everybody with me? So here, look, Can, does somebody have the ASCII chart? Well, I don't want to yeah. bring up the ASCII chart. Okay, let's do this. Let's do zero, one, two, and three. Can you give me the ASCII for zero? No. Uh, sorry, not the ASCII. The binary for the ASCII zero. So look up in the oh, ASCII, ASCII chart. Zero. Okay. Yeah, so look up the, uh, the ASCII zero. Uh, and what, what are the bits? Text three. Okay, and what is it in binary? Uh, zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one. Zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 zero. And what about the ASCII for one? Zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 one. And for two? Uh, zero, one, zero. <laughs> I guess. Well, no, isn't that right? No, it'd be zero, like one, zero. Oh, oh, no. no. That's what I would think. That she should be right. No, this is right, isn't it? Yeah, that is right. Okay. This is right. It looks different because this is 8 bit and it's only 7 bits here. Oh, right, 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 right. And then. Yeah, that was that extended ASCII one. thing. So it's 0011, one, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero, and this is what? 0011, one, and this is 0011. Zero, zero, one, one. Right, okay, so, and then dot, 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 okay? But now look, here's the point. Here's the point. This, this is the decimal value that we want to output. But to convert it to the ASCII value, what do we have to do? We have to force what to happen. What, what, what's, the dif what's the difference between the decimal what's the difference right. between the decimal value and the ASCII value? What's the difference? The, uh, it's these. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So what we have to do is we have to force these digits to be one one to convert from decimal to ASCII. Right. Converts on the character. Now do you see that next yeah, now let's you now, or now or it with zero you or it with zero F zero zero. Well you or it with yeah, it was zero, 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 zero. Three, zero? Three, zero. Yeah. You or it, see, so what you have to do, yeah, you have to or, you have to or it with, with, uh, with zero, 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 one, one, zero, 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 zero. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So you have to or it with zero, zero, three, zero. So what is that next instruction? Mask it. Yeah, when it says convert sum to character, what is the A1? That's an OR, an OR instruction? Yeah, it's an OR it's, instruction. It's the OR instruction, and from memory location 0015, what's it 0015? The mask. The mask, 0030, so that's the mask for the ASCII character. Is that always the mask for the ASCII character? Well, and if, yeah, to convert the, di the decimal number, to convert the decimal digit to the ASCII digit, you do, that's how you do it. Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, and then after we do that, then what's the F1 instruction? Store it. So now, where are we going to store it to? Memory. Yeah. Zero, zero, one, zero. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the store. Oh. Not quite. Not quite. F1. Can you look up what is F? Well, it's store byte. Ah, it's store byte. So that takes what? Yeah. Remember how store byte works? It takes, it takes the what? The right half mm -hmm. of the accumulator, are you with me? Mm -hmm. And puts it in memory. Now, where does it say it's going to put it? Zero, zero, one, zero. But what's it, zero, zero, one, zero? zero, zero. Uh, yeah, we, we, we stuck in a little zero, zero there as storage for the character to output. Are you with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what's the next instruction? Five, one. Oh, we were, were you, you remember oh, five, one. Right. That's the output character from where? From zero, zero, zero one, zero. Yeah. yeah. Phew! <laughs> all that to add five, all that to add five and three and output it. Okay, so now we're going to do our, now we're going to do our demo. And I'll demo the, I'll, I'll demo the previous one as well. I didn't want to have to make two switcheroos here. <laughs> okay, so here's our demo. Uh, now, I'm going to show you something really slick. You want to see something really slick? Oh, actually, first let me show you another really slick. Do you see this, all this up here? Mm -hmm. This, have you, know, have you discovered this yet? This is a little byte converter. Look at this. If you want to know a letter, oh, thank you can put like 
G in here, and as soon as you press G, it gives it to you in binary, it gives it to you in hex, and it gives you it to you in decimal. And if you want to change, if you want to put the decimal, you can make this four, and there's the H. And if you want to do the hex value, you or oh, you want you want great. to do the binary here, you you, you can do this one, and there it is for you all. What is the zero? Is, is that really slick? How does the hex zero mean? X is the convention for de denoting a hexadecimal value. Oh. So how, in the book we do parentheses hex, but T typically, the more standard notation zero is zero x. x. Yeah. And and actually, that works in C plus plus. Really? Yeah, I think we did that. You did zero no, x? no, I, yeah, yeah. I think we did. I think well, we I used it. I think we did a zero x when we were doing the hash functions. Oh yes. Yeah, I do. I think that. okay. Okay, is everybody see? So that's one nice little thing that it. So does zero x is that just notation? For that 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 means whatever comes late after that is a hexadecimal value because see see you couldn't tell if this were like if this is this could be h. It could have like, been decimal. Yeah. Like oh, not h. F d. So see d. Yeah, it won't. Yeah, it's like if I try to put if I try to put like uh, m. Oh, see. M. Yeah, it's way cool. It's all it's all. You know, e, yeah. Would you more than that? Though? Can you put like no, no, it's one byte. It's a byte converter. Hex it's hex a one. It's a byte converter. Does hex technically not care if it's capital or lowercase? It does not care. But we usually do capital. But we usually do capital. Oh, well, yeah. But you know, the industry stand. I mean, it's kind of more standard. See, there's the e, mm -hmm. and it's the same with the e. See, but anyway, that's one nice thing. But now here's another slick thing. Have you know, have you discovered the help system yet? Mm -hmm. Check this out. You know, you can either do the help up here or you can do the help here. Now watch this. This help system, first of all, it has all the instructions on how to use the, the app. And here, all of the examples in the book are all right here. And if you click on it, it will bring up the examples that's built into the app. Aww. All right. So the one that we wanted to do was, that was the high. Now here is the one that is output them in reverse order. Are you with me? And look, not only does it give you for this for the object programs, not only does it give you in this, you know, the way we did it from figure 4.34, it also gives it to you in binary over here. But watch what's even more cool. Down here you can copy to object. Now you click this, boom, there it is all for you in the object pane. All right? So it already shows you the input? And not only that, it gives the sample input if it has any input. It gives you some sample input here to but use. not the output. Well, no, because you haven't run the program. Now, you, now to, to demo the program, we run it. Wouldn't you have to run it in order to get the input, too? No, 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 no. This you type in. Okay. This you, here, yeah, hey, yeah, here, so let me show you. But, so, now, so now you see it, what's the first thing we do when we have an object one here? We load, right? So we go under here, build, and we do load. Now watch what happens in the memory dump. Now you see how that got loaded into memory up there? Mm -hmm. Boom. All right. And now if we do, if we want to single step through this thing, we can do start debugging object. And now we'll do our single step again, right? So this is the one. So this is the instruction that's going to execute next, right? And so when we, when we single step through here, what's the program counter now? Zero, right? It's all zeros. So when we single step, so what will this do? When I click, click single step, what will it do? It'll, It'll fetch that instruction, bring it into the instruction uh, into the instruction register, which consists of the instruction specifier and the operand specifier, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll execute it. So watch this. Now you can see the U. And now you can, yeah, and now where did it? Zero D. It's in the second line. We put the U there. Right. Oh yes, it put the it put the U there. That, why doesn't that show up? That should show up. It does on the right. It says U. Yeah, I know it shows up there, but I thought that 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 should show up in color. Uh, um, and now let me single step again. Yeah, see, like this one. That one shows. Up here. Yeah, this one. I don't know why that. So so this it shows that it that it it input the P there. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And now we single step one more time, and there the P comes out. And then we single step one more time, and there the U comes out, all right? And now this next one is, is the stop instruction is about to execute, so we do stop, right? And now just to show you that, you know, this could be like um, RE, okay? And so now if we load, oh, I didn't, we didn't need to load again. Oh, I loaded the wrong thing. Oh, shoot. I hate it when that happens. Um, 
I need to go copy to object again. Sorry. Um, so. But, uh, but um, the RE. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I can load it first. Okay, so we'll load it. Now it's loaded, right? The program's loaded. So now this is RE, and now and now when we do start debugging object, we can single step through. And now what will happen is. There it is. Is the R. Yeah, there's the R. And then there's the E. And then we output the E and then we output the R. And boom. See? Are we good? Everybody see how that works? Okay. And now, you guys, let's check out our next one that we worked our way through. Adding the 5 plus the 3 to get the 8. Yeah? So check this out. We'll copy to object. And there it is. It's all in there. You know, it's with one space in between ending with a ZZ. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And now you notice that this is left over from last time, what's in the memory. So we got to make sure and load our load. So there's, uh, we, there's our program all loaded here. And now uh, we will go to build and start debugging object and watch what happens now. Okay, so now what's, um, what's this first instruction going to do? It's going to get it's into the, into the Accumulator. So, boom, and there's the five in the accumulator. See that? Is that cool? And now the next one is what? Add. Add. So there's the eight. Are you with me? And the next one was what? Uh, or. Yeah, or. So that in hex is three eight, you know. Yeah. But in decimal, that's five six, but that's not too relevant. That value is not too relevant for us. And it just did the or. Okay. And now what will it do? No, not yet. Oh. It's in the accumulator. It has to store it in that little, in that one little location. Where was that? Boom! And see, look how it, isn't that cool? It shows where it stored it. Okay. And now when store bit store byte store byte store byte. Store byte. Yeah. Store byte. So that just stored one byte. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And then one more. Boom! There comes the eight. And then one more. Stop. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question. Suppose instead of storing, suppose instead of adding three, no, what did we add this time? Three and five. Three and five. Suppose we add three and nine. No, three, yeah. Wait. Three and fifteen. No, no. Wait. I haven't... Because, because what's showing here, this shows it in hex, this shows it in decimal. decimal. But it's not the ASCII. That's, he that's eight. It's three, zero, three eight interpreted as a decimal number is 56. I put 56 up in the... Um, yeah, good one. Ha ha. 56. There it is. Eight. Are you with me? Yeah. Those are the different representations. Ooh, okay. is that a cool little thing? Uh, yeah, I know. I always, I always tell it to you a little bit later so that you'll appreciate it. <laughs> uh, no, uh, um, that little feature, uh, Ryan, a long time ago, did this in another app, and I, yeah, it's there are some student code still left over for that thing for that little app, but I think it's really handy. Um, hold on, I want. There's a value I want. I thought it was nine plus. Yeah, wait. If um, what's it zero zero one three? What what was it zero zero one three? No, the three. Yeah, yeah, the three. Now, does everybody see right here in the object code that this is where the three was? Mm -hmm. Now, if I change this three here to nine, what am I going to be adding? Nine. Does everybody see what I did there in the machine language program? You'll be adding 9 and 5. I'll be adding 9 and 5. Now, what is 9 and 5? 14. 14. So here's my question. Do you have any predictions here? If I load this, and so now... And, the one or the four. and so now there was... Uh, the 9 is here, right? We're only outputting one character. And what do you think is going to happen if I... Just if I if I run it, what do you think is going to happen? Either it's not going to like it, or it'll yeah. output one thing. Yeah, but can you predict what it's? You're you're right. It's not going to like. It, but what's it going to output? The four. The one. The four. Are you ready? Nine. 
oh, that's the wrong one. Shoot. I keep I keep thinking mm -hmm. that I can. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, hold on. I got to do it over again. So this is going to be 9, right? Uh -huh. Zero, 09. Okay, and now we're going to load this. Build, 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 build. build. Load. Okay, and now, and now, drum roll, what's going to happen when I run the object? What's going to happen? Nope. What? Where did that come from? It's greater than. <laughs> That's the greater than ask yeah, sign. Where, where, what, where did that come from? Where did that come from? Could you predict this if I ask it to you? If I ask you on a quiz? Oh, 14's above. The mask isn't doesn't work for that. Yeah, why not? For, it only works for zero. Yeah, nine. but could you predict what it would output? Well, if you looked at the ASCII chart. Yeah, if you had the ASCII chart, could you predict that yeah. why this character is coming out? Yeah. How could how could you because calculate the that? Mask. The mask would be it'd be the three. It would the be the zero. Yeah, it would be the 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 one one. But then it would be. One 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 zero. Can you tell on the ASCII chart what that character is? Yeah. It's the greater than character. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, if you yeah. put it up in the conversion. Yeah. Zero, one, one. So if you oh, you're right. If we put it up here. So what is it? Zero, three. It's, uh, for hex, it's three E. Three E. Yeah, it's the greater than. Yeah. Because that's. So, if you Be, so, so, what is the, so what is the, what's the limitation of this program? Yes, you can only have a sum up to nine, uh, up to just a one digit. It doesn't work for more than one digit. Pretty raw, huh? Pretty limiting? Yeah. Well, but that's the only thing that the machine can do. It can only output a character. So it's just going to output symbols once it's above 10? Like well, 10? I mean, the character output does, it has the ASCII you know, chart built in, and whatever the bit pattern is, that's what it outputs. Mm -hmm. So in order to have a... A program that is more convenient, we'll have to wait until the next chapter. Okay, to do it more convenient. But this is the only thing that the machine does. You, you know, this is the raw, this is raw machine. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that I would like to, to show you, and that's 4.36. Now, look here uh, at figure 4.36 here. Do you see? Here, let's compare this with 4.3. Now, watch this, code, watch this code right here. Do you see from here, from this point on down, what does that code look like? A gets the first number, add same two well, numbers. Well. Convert, it looks exactly like the same one that the, that the other one was, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Except the only difference is this is going to 1.7 instead of 1. And why is it going to 1.7? Because 1.7, there's the 5 and there's the 3 because we got a couple of extra instructions up here. Are you with me? Is everybody clear? But other than that, this adds this t puts the, gets the five, adds the three, converts it the sum to a character, outputs it, boom boom, and so it seems, and you know it it uh, puts the character at zero zero one six and then outputs from zero zero one six right and then stops. So it seems like this should add three and five and get eight. But. What do these instructions do? Now look, what is the D1? That's load byte. Now what's it load, loading byte from where? From 01D. Well, what's it 01D? That's 81 in hex. And, where, and, then, but then, and then what is this instruction doing? But where is it storing it? At 9. But wait a minute. What's at 9? Adding the two numbers. Nine. That's there's the nine. So it's changing subtraction to addition. Other way around. Addition it's subtraction. changing the addition. To, so by the time it gets here, what's it going to do? It's going to subtract. Oh my goodness! So if we copy this to here, mm -hmm. all right, and we and we um, load, and then now watch what happens. Let's run the object and see what the output is. It's two. But now, watch, this is really instructive, I think. Let's start debugging the object. And you can see here what it's doing. So what is this instruction doing? Loading it's the loading the, the byte. And now do you see the byte? It's in the accumulator. It's the 8-1 in the accumulator. And then what's it doing? What's it going to do? It's going to store it. But look where it stored it. Right there. 
Right there, part of the program. What is this program doing? It's changing itself. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's changing itself. And then what's it doing? And then what's the next thing going to do? Well, yeah, it's going to load and then subtract, right? And then mask and then store it there. And then when it outputs, it's the two. And then stop. So that's the end of the demo. Here, are we? Okay, so that's the end of the demo. Self-modifying program. And we'll see you on Monday.